Hello birdies, welcome to Love Spell. So today, it's still really hot in Texas. Um, but honestly, like, who am I? Who is this girl with straight hair? And like, I just got my hair done. <laughs> and for the first time in forever, I asked for a blowout instead of my getting my hair diffused. And it looks really nice. I really enjoy it. I'm liking it. I'm. It's exciting to be able to actually like, run my fingers through my hair. I normally can't do that with all my curls. So yeah, it's exciting. I'm gonna try not to fan you guys all the time, but yeah. Anyway, I mentioned my last video, which honestly should have been going up on Thursday, but it's gonna go up on Sunday. Apologies for the delay. Um, that I would like to do some sort of like showing a tell of all my collab palettes that I own, because it's most of the palettes that I do own. Um, however, I decided it would be more fun if we make it a ranking. I'm not sure if this has been done before. I mean, palette rankings has always been done, but I'm specifically going with collabs and collabs only. So that being said, celebrity brands don't count. So unfortunately for me, Lauren Los Angeles, Persona Cosmetics, Scott Barnes, Patrick Ta, all of those, Huda Beauty, all of those are out because those are actual celebrity or influencer brands, and these are collabs only. So that being said, let's get started. I honestly don't know what this is is gonna look like I have all the palettes and I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen palettes which is a little bit less than half of my collection that are collapsed and I mentioned this in my video um, that the, the was the makeup collection tag I enjoy purchasing eyeshadows and I specifically like purchasing collapse a lot of them are with influencers others are not now that being said this has nothing to do with the influencer themselves this is just the palette i for the most part enjoyed all of this um what's it called all of this influencers i can though say that spoiler alert um i have like the the star wars palette i have not watched this show i just enjoy the color stories and that's why i got them but I, they are collapsed technically I've never been subscribed to Jaclyn Hill, but I do own the Jaclyn Hill palette. And I've never been subscribed to Jackie Aina, but I do own her collab palette just because I saw a lot of reviews. They said they're really good. And I actually do enjoy the palettes. I think the color stories actually fit me well. But again, I don't, I've never been subscribed to them. I don't have any personal opinions on them. But some of them, they are actually quite dear to my heart. For example, we have Judy. I love Judy uh, or Robbie Christie and Angela Bright. I really love these these influencers. So just want to put that out there as a disclaimer. Like this has no personal opinion how I feel about the influencer themselves. This is just what I think about the palette and for my own personal preferences. Okay, let's get started. I know exactly what my bottom is, and if you didn't know this was my bottom, I don't know what to tell you. Um, and that's going to be the Samantha March and Over collab. I want to start out by saying that I haven't actually touched this palette very much. I think I've used it two or three times since I've got it. I got it last year. Um, I am currently trying to pan the bronzer that's here. This highlighter is way too light for me, so we can forget that right there. And I actually really enjoy this blush. And I've played with this a couple of times, but not really as much as I should have. Quite honestly, in retrospect, this was a bad purchase. My thing is, I love Samantha, and I wanted to support Samantha. So I bought the palette because I, I did think it's cute, and it is cute. And as far as I'm concerned, because I've never worked with Oprah before that, it's okay. It wouldn't make it my top 10 at all, <laughs> formula-wise, but it's not a bad formula, because uh, I've worked with Beth Fabulous. This is not it. I just, this is not my color story. This is, this is not it. This is not me. Uh, and I think I should have recognized that a little more at that time. Oh, wow. So this is my bottom 15 ranking. <sighs> Number 14 is a tough one. But I think it just has to be, it has to be said. And that is the Pure X Robert Christie. I actually find this formula to be relatively easy to work. It is pressed pigment, so it is a different formula. Um, my biggest issue is that, wrong one. <laughs> this is, this is not it. I don't do rainbows. I like colors, but I like subtle muted jewel tone colors, not bright neon colors. And I have played with these kinds of colors before, and I have played with this side in the past. It's just not my personal preference. So there's that. I absolutely love the other side, and I play with it 
so many times. This is exactly my type of color. Sorry, I do find this to be a slight repetitive. Like, I don't know that we needed this. Like, specifically with this shade, I feel like we could have had something else that's a little more fun. I personally love everything else in this palette. Like, honestly, I love this side. But the truth of the matter is, technically, I only love 50% of the palette. So I, I feel like I have to put that into retrospect. I love the neutral side. Don't really care for the colorful side. But it's good to add little pops of color when that's what I'm looking for. It's just, you know, it's not my thing. <laughs> so that's number 14. Number 13, I feel like we've gone through it. Um, I This used to be one of my favorite palettes. And if you've done, seen any of my, like, my old rankings, I used to, this palette, I loved it. And I played with it so much. But it really has fallen in grace throughout the years. It just hasn't held up as much as I would like. Um, so that's going to be the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe palette, the original one. I'm not sure if I have the older than new palette because I bought it like right in between the two. So I really can't say. I like the formula and I actually really like this palette. I just feel like this could have been a 20 pan palette rather than a 35 pan palette. And we would have still gotten every single shade and variety we needed. We did not need three pink shades. We did not need two of these kinds of like colors. We did not need all of these different variations of red or orange shades, like warm tones. Um, we did not need this plum and cool tone and black, you know, like this could have been paired down into a 20 pan palette and I think it would have been a lot better, but that's just me. I do like the formula. I look like the colors a lot and I, every time I create a look with this, I really enjoy it. I have noticed the formula start changing, but it's also five years old. So what do you expect? You know, like I said, me and this palette have gone through it. I actually still enjoy the palette, <laughs> but that's number 13. Okay, so number 12. Oh, man. This one is hard because I know what the answer is. I just don't want to admit it. And that's going to be the Proceed with Caution ColourPop X Shayla palette. Um, so we're missing my favorite shade from this palette, which is Hazard, which is currently in my At Forest Sight palette, which will come along later. That's this shade right here. So imagine that shade being right here. If this shade was right here, this little thing right here would have been the absolute perfect quad. But then we have the added of everything else. I don't love everything else. I think this is a really nice shade right here. Drill, we all need a matte shade, I guess, uh, to like set our lid. And I, this formula is different from ColourPop. This is extremely powdery, like subculture powdery, you know? I can work with it, but it is so difficult, <laughs> which is why I was able to hit pan on it so quickly. Um, I don't love this, but I love this so much. It kind of made up for the 50%, you know? So there's that. <laughs> That's where we're going with it. Okay. Um, oh man, we are really going through this. So that was number 12. So for number 11, what is it, 12? One, two, three, four. That, that, that was 12, that was 12. So for number 11. Oh man, oh man, oh man. It's gotta be one of these two. I just, it's hard because I feel like I can't tell. Um, let me show you what I'm seeing so you understand what I'm talking about rather than just me staring off camera. So I'm going between the Mandalorian and the Childhood. So this is gonna be 11 and 10 or 10 and 11. I'm really not sure which, where to put them. The issue with this palette is honestly, they're actually really good quality and I really, really, really enjoy them. It's just, they're so monochromatic that they kind of lack a little something something. And yeah, there's that. They just lack a little something something. <laughs> um, first off, this green palette, I, this is my perfect, perfect shades of green. This is actually really nice muted color. I think I really enjoyed this row. I think having this muted. Because it's quite neutral, they're not cool tone or warm tone. There's perfect neutrals that can really make these greens pop. I don't care for this like dirty olive gold shades. I, I have quite a few of them. They're, they're just not my favorite. I think I'm going to put this one as number 11. Because I actually feel like, surprisingly, you're able to do a lot more with the Mandalorian palette. Um, just because they're actually quite neutral. And these shimmers are actually quite versatile. This is very silver, very bronzy. That yellow actually works really well. This like cool tone neutral works really well. 
it looks quite green right here. It is like a silver black and green is really good. I actually enjoy these two shades. I'm always nervous of like grays and like really cool tones like this because they might look very ashy on my olive undertones. But I can actually make those work. So that for me is super impressive. Um, so I guess I'm, this one's going to be number 10. Yeah, number 10 I think. We'll find out if I'm wrong, I guess, as we go down the line. Um, just know that my math may not be mathing. Okay, this one's technically not a eyeshadow palette, and it is technically not a col traditional collab, but it's a Lunar Beauty X uh, Larly Los Angeles collab. And this is specifically their blush palette. I just love blush, okay? Like, there's nothing better than blush. Blush makes the world go round. My only concern with this palette is, quite honestly, I don't think this color goes well with my skin tone. And I don't particularly love golden highlighters, but this highlighter right here, fucking gorgeous. That's the best way I can say. Fucking gorgeous. It is a little dark, so if you're very, you know, pale, that might not be your kind of color. Personally, I love it. It is so good. It is the perfect kind of shade that I enjoy. Uh, I know this kind of looks like a bronzer, but it does have like a bronze tour kind of feel to it it is there's a certain rosiness to it but you can definitely kind of multitask those too <laughs> but i actually really 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 enjoy this palette so number nine <laughs> okay uh number eight we're starting to get we're starting to get really difficult <laughs> oh god it is starting to get difficult um <sighs> this is one of my top favorite palettes now, hear me out, because I actually really, really, really love this palette, and this color story is honestly quite perfect. My issues are actually with the Anastasia Beverly Hills formula, which concerns me because I've heard from multiple people that this is the best Anastasia Beverly Hills can offer, and if this is your best, yikes. Um, the formula itself is not bad. It's just so difficult to work with. And that's same from someone who I feel like I can work with almost any kind of formula. Like I can make it work. <laughs> but this one just, it gives me the hard time. I honestly do feel like with every single one of these shimmers, you need a glitter glue because it will fade, move, whatever. And I never really have issues with that. But with this palette, for whatever reason, I always have issues with my eyeshadow moving um, or creasing and stuff. And again, not an issue I normally have. So you have to glitter glue, uh, you have to put glitter glue on these, even though they're technically not glitter glues. And additionally, these are a little more, more difficult to blend. And now granted, they're very pigmented. But even that being said, because I've worked with other very pigmented formulas, these are difficult to blend. Okay, I like, that's just the way it is. You're going to spend some time blending. This is not the palette that you use if you're in a rush. You need your time. And... Honestly, for high-end palette, that's just not right. The color story, perfect. That's the best I can describe it, perfect. You have your neutrals and your more pinky cool tones. I really like it. I actually think the color story is perfect. She couldn't have made a better assortment. And they apply initially very well, but they sometimes fade throughout the day. And that's just not right. <laughs> um, it might just be my formula getting old, maybe. But... I just don't love the formula from Anastasia, but the palette itself is so good and you just initially apply it. I can make it work if I make adjustments to it, but I just shouldn't have to work that hard. So, you know, there's that. Um, number seven. <laughs> number seven, I feel like it's going to get me in trouble, but I'm just going to have to say it. It's a Tiny Marbles palette. I feel like this should have been ranked higher. But my issue with this palette, and I've said this before, is it gives me writer's block. I don't know what it is, or creative block, whatever you want to call it. I have such a hard time creating looks. The formula, beautiful. I, I did crash it a little bit and I had to fix it, but it looks like it's staying. The formula is beautiful. It's super easy to work with. Some of the undertones don't play well with each other, and that does create, <laughs> create some issues for me because I have created some looks where I just felt like it looks a little muddy, but it's not the formula itself. It's just the undertones, the undertones don't play well with each other because some of them are quite like this has a very green undertone. This one has a very green undertone. This is a yellow undertone. Uh, well, this one is very cool toned, very cool toned, cool toned. And so sometimes I said they just, 
they just don't play well together. <laughs> some do, some don't, and you just gotta figure it out. But that I think that might that's part of it. But the other part is I honestly just get creatives block. I've watched so many YouTube tutorials and I like I get all inspired. I'm like, okay, well I like that combination, I like that combination. And then I sit down to like try to recreate something or do something and then I just block. Which is not the palace fault, it's me. But I I just get writers like creative block. I, I can't seem to create an eye look with this palette. So for that reason alone, here is number seven. Okay, we're down to the top six. Now, who is going to get beat out just barely? That's really what we come down to. And unfortunately, it's gonna be the Fool's Fantasy Ballad for Lila Los Angeles and um, Thoroughly Los Angeles and Lunar Beauty. I actually really enjoy this palette. Like, let me, let me not take away from that. Um, my only concern is that I don't know which one. I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's it's not the first thing that I think of when I think of this palette. Like, I'm not thinking, let me go reach for that palette. I think when I reach for it, the, the looks come out beautiful. Like, truly, truly beautiful. I do find some shades to be slightly repetitive or somewhat too close to each other. Some of these undertones are actually quite interesting, but they play very well with each other, and I really enjoy this formula. I think I like the... Um, because the, the, the dual chrome here is really good, the shimmery shade, the, this is one of Laura Lily Lee's uh, shimmers. The dual chrome is definitely one of Laura Lee's formula because like she's done it multiple times in the past. Um, so I really, really enjoy the formula and they, like I said, the shades play really well together. It's just, it's not, it doesn't come forward as an idea and yeah, I kind of have to like force myself to use it in a sense, but then once I use it, I love it. So I think for that reason alone, this has to be my number five. Okay. Uh, so number six. So okay. Now we're here. This is top five moments. Okay. So what's number number five? Um. Funny enough, I've talked so much shit about the shimmer formula in this palette, in this for this brand in general, but it's still in my top five, and that's gonna be Odin's Eye. It's not a bad formula. It's just. The shimmers are difficult to work with. That's the <laughs> you you definitely have to do glitter glue. Don't use a brush. Do your fingers. But this multi-chrome dual chromes beautiful. This undertones are actually quite unique. This is one of my favorite favorite color stories. Some of these greens surprisingly don't play well with each other, which I don't appreciate. But this bottom row is everything like smokiness. This shade right here is actually very good and it can be shared out very well. I love all the greens and the undertones of greens because I love olives and this is very like grungy olive green. I love it. So I really just love it. My only comb with this palette is quite honestly, the, the shimmers are not my favorite formula for shimmers. But all that aside, it's actually a great form. It's still, it's not a bad formula. It's just not my favorite. Um, I do have a little bit of a hard time creating like different eye looks. I feel like I always kind of go for the same thing, either very smoky or very green looks. So I feel like I, w I wish I had a little more variety, but overall, this is top notch. I love this palette. So I'm just sliding it back into Unicorn. Okay. I'm actually quite surprised. I'm gonna put this as low as I'm putting this, but at four side, it's gonna be number four. Um, and I'm saying that because almost always when I travel, I travel with this palette. This is absolutely my favorite palette to travel with. It has everything. I'm sure you've noticed there are some differences in this palette. And that's why I think I had to put them for it. And it's this two shades right here. I'm always switching them up. Now, this is supposed to be an olive navy blue. Uh, sorry, not olive. Uh, like a deep, deep navy blue. And then this is supposed to be a really ugly gold yellow. And I don't like yellow golds. I like yellow. I just don't like golds. Um, so for that reason, I also feel like this cooler side is like, it's missing some representation. So I, that's why I, this is actually from the So Jaded palette, palette, and then this is from the, um, what's it called? 
uh, the I already mentioned it and it proceed with caution palette um, and I think these perf they just work really well together I, I have nothing negative to say about this I have heard some people say that they have issues working with this palette think of it as a pressed pigment palette not as a regular eyeshadow palette and I promise you that will fix a lot of your issues um, and if you still have any issues, let's talk about it. I've never had issues with this palette, and I, I, I just love it. This color store is perfect. You can do neutrals, you can do greens, you can do cool tones, you can do yellows, warm tones. It's smoky. You can do everything with this palette. So I, I love it. This is my favorite palette to travel with. Um, that's number four. <sighs> Man. Okay, top three, guys. This is this is it. But inside, I love Judy. Um, but... Judy aside, this is honestly just such a good palette. This is like a twist on your regular neutral palette. I'm sure you could tell there's a color correlation or of colors into this like last couple of palettes. You have your like mustardy yellows, you have some greens, you have some like peachy pinky tones, you have more deeper shades. This is the only shade that I actually don't like, which is the red dragon, oh, the dragon color. I just don't wear red that's not my thing but I really enjoy that I can make more neutral looks with this too right here because it's like a mustardy yellow uh, mustardy brown it doesn't look too too yellow but it can look yellow and I really enjoy these two shades right here this is the duochrome and this is um, the multi-chrome right here so these two you, you can the, the the camera is not picking it up but they're beautiful they're honestly very very beautiful and I love this palette. It's one of the easiest ones to create really easy eye looks with. Again, the shimmers are a little hard to work with because Odin's eye, you need some glitter glue. But I really, really enjoy this palette. I, I can create so many different combinations of looks and they all look so different from each other. And I really like the different formulas, the different textures. It's just very well done. <laughs> it's just it, honestly very well done palette. So this is number three. All right. I'm actually surprised this is going so high into my ranking because I gave it some slight shit. When I was doing like my first impressions, I talked some shit, okay? Another bad sense is just I was trying to do a green look and it didn't look green. It looked like a teal purple, like it didn't, it pulled too blue. But I since have used the shit of this palette and that is the Angela Bright X Sigma Beauty palette. I've used the hell out of this palette like i said this it looks green but there's it just leans a very cool toned which is not my personal preference for greens i'm not sure if that shows but it, it looks a little more blue in that sense and in the eye when i was trying to do my eye look it looked it looked blue and i was i was very much so trying to make it pop blue i mean green all that aside though, I've played with this palette a ton and I'm constantly reaching for it, which I was not surprised because around the time I bought this palette, I had also just got, got the Yaka palette from Natasha Denona and I had gotten the Full Fantasy palette from uh, Lunar Beauty X Larry Los Angeles. And the one that I keep going back for is this one. And I mentioned this before, I have tried Sigma Beauty eyeshadow formula once before with the Enchanter palette and had a terrible experience. I decluttered it within like six months of having the palette. It just did not work for me. So my expectations were not very high for this palette, specifically the formula, but the formula has honestly blown me away. I do wish this was a little bit more pigmented or more buildable because it does kind of blend into my skin tone a bit, but I've since noticed how useful this palette, this shadow is, even though it is a little too light for me. Um, but it smooths out this color. It makes this a little more pinky tone. Like it just blends into all these shades so beautifully. This shimmers are actually quite nice. And I keep reaching for this one right here, which is uh, Autumn and Champagne Problems. And then this is the perfect pearlized. It's not a shimmer. It's not. But there's just a little, like I said, it just feels like pearl and like it just so smooth. So when you want to do the inner corner or your brow bone, so beautiful. I just, I'm actually really impressed. I'm constantly get my creative juices flowing. I don't get any like writer's block, quote unquote, with this palette. And I'm constantly wanting to create sometimes very simple looks. I feel like this is a perfect palette to create actually very simple looks with or very mm -hmm. intense and inc like just overly complicated looks. You can do either or, but I've definitely um, tried to put like these two 
like really just soft in the crease and then try to put this all over the lid and just try to make it like a weird pur purpley look and they look beautiful i tried doing the little quad that she was telling us about that she created beautiful i tried to incorporate these little fold looks beautiful i tried to put a little more pinky tones in it gorgeous so you can really like tone it down or like really expand into it and i just had the best time with this palette so yeah i'm really excited about that <laughs> all right and the last palette should be not surprise to anyone on my channel because it's honestly me in a palette and that's the sojeda palette now my sojeda does look a little different <laughs> for starters uh this shade right here is currently in my at forest eye palette and diamond is in another thing that i have over there i did get rid of the glitters i don't like glitters um but everything else it's perfection same thing i was talking about if i want to do something yellow if i want to do something cool so more neutral if i want to do something green which i love greens and this is a more traditional green this will not look uh bluish you can do that and i love bluish i love this shade right here tiger i love this kind of like olive tones i actually really enjoy these blues and this shade right here is awesome if i want to do something smoky i really like this shade I like every single one of the shades. There's not a dud in this palette as far as I'm concerned. The formula is great. And honestly, Diamond is so beautiful to just like top on top of everything. If I want to do something more like lavender, purple, I can. If I want to do something cool tone, which I... This is the first time I played with cool tones. It was this two shades right here. And it was honestly so beautiful. Alexandrite is understated. Truly understated. It's the most pretty purple shade ever. I just really, really love this palette. So, no surprise there. All right, I think I'm rambling enough. I'm curious to know about your collabs that you, like palettes that you've owned. Again, this has nothing to do with the influencer or whoever it is that they're collabing with. Um, I just wonder your experience, like how many collab palettes do you own because I'm nosy? And just give me your top three. Cause I, let's say you own 20, we don't, if you want to rank all 20 of them, please do. If you don't have the time for that, just give me the top three. Give me your top three and your bottom one. <laughs> I think that would be interesting enough. Bottom one or bottom two? <laughs> and top three. Minimum. Minimum. Okay. Um, please do not forget to like... <gasps> I missed the palette. Oh my god. I missed the palette. Oh shoot. Did I even talk about it? No, I didn't. <gasps> Scandal. Okay. This, or honestly, should be... Somewhere between the Mandalorian palette and before the blush palette. That's where this should go. Um, if you haven't seen it, this is the Laura Los Angeles and Erin Weaver palette. And it is the perfect pastel rainbow palette. <laughs> um, and you have two duochromes. You have this like pinky purple and then you have cloud, which actually is more of a multi-chrome. Um, and this was it. Larly has done these kinds of shades before. So it's in the full coverage palette. It smells beautiful. <laughs> and they're so easy to blend. And like they actually do build really well. Um, they're not the most pigmented straight off the bat. But they build really, really well and really easily. And I just really love this formula and this palette in itself. And I'm, damn, I'm so mad that I missed it. But anyway, glad I caught myself. Um, so technically I have 16 collab palettes. Again, technically 15 if you don't count the blush palette. But that's that's that. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.